Thank you, Pat. Good morning, Parker. Uh, I had a little bit of problem this morning. Uh, Kathy's been washing my clothes in hot water, I think, because all the pants in my closet have shrunk. So I couldn't find a pair of pants. I'd get a pair of pants out, I'd slide the belt in, I'd try and get them on, couldn't get them on. Tried a second one, couldn't get them on. Said, I'm trying one more and then I'm going back to bed. So, uh, please make sure you sign your name and put this in the uh, bulletin. If you don't, I get in trouble. Shelly gets mad at me because we get a count of 50 or more and we get 30 in the offering plate. So, I get in trouble. Now, I mess her up, though. I check first-time visitor or something like that, you know, just just to mess her with her. But anyway, uh, I, I got a Christmas present that I really liked. I got a Mr. Coffee coffee mug warmer. And usually in the morning when I'm having my quiet time and my, my uh, time at the breakfast table, I have about a half a cup of coffee, and then it'll get cold. And I hate cold coffee. Well, I got this Mr. Coffee. I says, well, I'm going to give it a try. And I flipped it on and put my coffee mug in there. And I get hot coffee all the way to the bottom. It's great. All righty. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time this morning when we can come uh, be with each other and be with you. Father, help us to seek forgiveness for anything that might be separating us from you so that we can be one with you and one with each other this morning. Bless Pastor Alex as he brings us our message. And Lord, we just thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Do we have a video? Okay.
What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, who is King of kings and Lord of lords. And he hears your prayers. He knows your heart. He sees it all. And even though you might not have had a chance to write one down, or it's so special to you that you cannot, God is there. He'll always be there. He knows your heart. He hears your prayers, and he does answer. The prayers that we do have today that are written, um, one is from Brenda Hendricks for her friend, Marie Howard, who is having um, heart surgery tomorrow at Bay Medical. One comes from Amanda to pray for um, her friend, Jeannie Knightson, who has a pulmonary embolism. One is to pray for Ashley and Andrew, our pastor's daughter and son-in-law. They both have COVID. And one is to pray for the family of Mary Lou Dodson. Her granddaughter passed away. So before we do pray on these prayers and the ones upon your heart, um, before this happens, we are also, the pastor asked, to pray for the council. So all those that are council leaders for 2022, can you stand up to be acknowledged who you are for our congregation that you might be prayed for in this year, that we would do the work of God and glorify the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Kathy. And if... um if you're not shy and you'd like to come forward um, and face the congregation, we'd like to pray for you. If not, you can just stand where you are. But we would like to pray for our church council members, and I'd like to recognize who they are. And we'll start in the back. And Judy, if you'll raise your hand. And Judy is in charge of congregational care. And then in front of her is Dawn. And, and Don, you do a little bit of everything. I'm just going to call you the finance person, but what's your title? Uh, she's our treasurer, okay. And I'm going to keep on coming down this way. I don't know if you can see it from home, but I'm going to say their names. And this is Bruce. And Bruce um, is our trustees chairman. And uh, you wear a couple of hats. What other hat? He's our lay leader as well. And then we're going to work our way around to the back. And... Uh, this is Mary Smith, and Mary is our council uh, chairperson. Is that the only hat you wear? Do you have any other positions? Okay. Yeah, she's the secretary also. She sort of does it all. For those of you that are retired, you know you do more with less, right? <laughs> okay. And then in front of me is Kathy, and she is our staff parish relation chairperson. And then moving up toward the back, uh, Brenda uh, is our Christian education chairperson. Or what is your official title? That's what I call it. And she's a lay delegate. That means she makes official votes. Um, mm -hmm. So make sure you give her any feedback, um, any concerns you have for the United Methodist Church. Then working our way back is uh, Gail. And um, Gail is our missions and good to have you back as well after being gone, you and your husband, for a few weeks. Did I miss anybody that's not here? Schmitty. And um, Schmitty is our, is it, is it lay witness? Evangelism. Okay. So thank you. Anybody else that I miss? Okay. All right. Well, let's pray for these prayer concerns. And if you'll remain standing as well, we're going to pray for you guys. I promise it won't be a long prayer. But we, are, we want to make sure the 2022 season starts off right, not only for continued prayer each week, which we also pray for these on Monday morning, but also for our council as they lead us as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne right now. And as we kneel in prayer, it is as real as the air we breathe. And Lord, we lift up to you these prayer concerns, all that were mentioned, those that have lost loved ones, those that are recovering from sickness and, and for uh, their health. 
Uh, we lift them up to you, Lord, uh, those that are new prayer concerns, those that are recurring. Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus, with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, that you bring healing and you bring comfort to those who need it this and every day. And, Lord, we also, while our council members are standing, Lord, thank you so much for their willingness to serve and to stand in the gap for bringing continuity for this church that has been around for many, many years. And, Lord, we thank you for our friends and visitors and those watching from home who serve in different kinds of ways, whether it's through prayer, through generous givings, whatever it is, we thank you, Lord, for them as well. Because we know, Lord, your word says where there is no vision, the people perish. Lord, this is your church, and you are the head, and we are the body. We're so honored to be here in your presence, and help us to follow you all the days of our lives until you call us home. This we ask in the name of the one who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Um, you need to remain standing because let's now go into our Apostles' Creed. If you want to stand, because I know you've been standing a long time for those officers. But everyone else, if you'll join us um, for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was crucified by the Holy Spirit. See, there's the word under, crucified, dead, and buried. Third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. I'm going to ask that you prepare yourselves for this morning's offering as the ushers come forward. Ushers.
Our scripture reading today comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away to these dumb idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that the, Jesus is Lord except for the, by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. Thank you so much, Bruce, and good morning again, church family and those watching from home. We're so glad that you're with us today. I want to share with you a message spiritual gifts, and church growth. An outline has been provided for you in your bulletin, or you can follow along on the monitor as well. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. God, we have known that for the longest time, we have been blessed as a church body to use our spiritual gifts in helping one another, in making the name of Jesus Christ known at Parker United Methodist Church for our community. But at times, we have misused the spiritual gifts that you've given us. Some of it is because we simply don't know how to use the gifts that you have given us. We have failed to help those that are homeless, those that are in pain, those that have diseases, injustices, and, and, and death that has affected thousands across not only our, our county, but our state, our country, and our world. Lord, and give us the courage that we need to help those that feel downtrodden, that feel marginalized, that, that are considered outcasts in our society. Lord, we, we as a people are not perfect. And in our imperfection, we think selfishly too much about ourselves as we think about bigger homes, about climbing the corporate ladder, about driving fancier cars, about wearing the finer uh, things in life, but at the expense of those that live below the poverty line. Forgive us for our lack of care, for our lack of sharing. Help us with these gifts that you give us to help those that are in need, to build your kingdom for your people here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. (coughs) Spiritual gifts and church growth. You know, the United Methodist Church recognizes today as the first special Sunday out of six uh, within our denomination globally. Today is called Human Relations Day, and that's why I had the church council stand up and we prayed and we put a blessing on them because they're just people and they represent you. And as individuals, they have different giftings, see things differently, and they have different responsibilities within the life of the church. But we must not forget 
that the head of the church is not the pastor. The head of the church is Jesus Christ. Your natural talents is what you're given when you're physically born. Spiritual gifts is what you're given when you're spiritually born again. These two things, talents and gifts, they're distinctly different, but yet sound so close. Now, take, for example, football. We've been getting a lot of football lately since of the beginning of uh, la late last summer and fall all the way up until even this weekend with NFL football playoffs. But think about this analogy for a second. A person that wants to play in the National Football League, they train their whole lives. They go into the weight room, they work on their leg muscles, they work on their arm muscles, they work on their chest muscles. They do everything they can to get to their, their goal of playing in the NFL. Now that takes a lot of talent, a lot of hard work, and sometimes they hire trainers to get them to that next level. Now let's just say that you are an NFL player and you make it to the next level and you uh, have a great career, 10 to, I don't know, 15 and 20 plus years like Tom Brady, for example. If you're a football player and you are able to play that long, but then your body just gives out from that natural talent that you worked on, then you go on to another thing in life, whatever that other thing is. Now, other people, they may join the military. Other people may work for corporate America. No matter what it is, at some point, you will get to that point where you say to yourselves, I think I'm going to retire. But the truth of the matter is, when you go into retirement, you are busier than ever before. Did I get an amen on that? Because you take care of your grown kids, you take care of your grandkids, you take care of your great-grandkids, you take care of your neighbors, you take care of your family. And most of all, as you use your spiritual gifts, you want to serve the Lord at Parker United Methodist Church and help your church family. You see, a spiritual gift sticks with you until the day you die. You just don't retire from being a Christian, you move on to the next level. And that next level is one day being reunited with your loved ones, with your friends, uh, uh, with everyone around the throne of God that those believe and who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now, let me, let me share something with you that's really important. If you've never lived your, uh, never lived out your spiritual gifts, you don't lose them. They just stay dormant. They, they sort of sleep deep down inside you. But if you. But if you activate those gifts, if you mobilize for ministry, then you will see a blessing that you've never seen before. And let me tell you, if those spiritual gifts are dormant right now, if they're hibernating, church, we need to wake them up this morning. Amen. We're currently in the middle of a Bible study on spiritual gifts. Last week was great. We broke out into several small groups, and I watched with amazement as the people ministered to one another. And this coming Wednesday at 1 o'clock, we're going to cover the second half of spiritual gifts. It's around 24 gifts that the Bible says, depending on your interpretation. But we're going to cover the last 12 gifts. That's this Wednesday. Come join us. No prerequisite necessary. But then on our fourth Wednesday Bible study of spiritual gifts, we are going to do a spiritual gifts inventory and reaffirm or discover for the first time what our spiritual gifts are. I invite you to come and bring a friend on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock p.m. But now, let's get on to our message for today, and that's spiritual gifts and church growth. Again, an outline's been provided for you. Let me just give you a quick overview of what we're talking about this morning. Number one, do you know what your spiritual gifts are? And number two, where do your spiritual gifts come from? And then number three, what is the extent of your gifts? In other words, what are the limitations of the gifts that God 
has given you. Now, let's go back and take a look at that first point that I mentioned, know the gifts. Turn with me in our text that Bruce read, the 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now, Bruce was reading from the New King James Version, excellent translation. I'm going to read from what's called the Amplified Version because it amplifies what God is saying. Let me read to you what it says. Now, about the spiritual gifts... The special endowments given by the Holy Spirit, brother and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Verse 2, you know that when you were pagans, you were led off after speechless idols. However, you were led off, whether by impulses or habit. Verse 3, therefore, I want you to know that no one speaking by the power and influence of the Spirit of God can say, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is my Lord, except by the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Other translations say this, don't be ignorant about your spiritual gifts. Now, I know that sounds like a strong word, but whatever translation you use, what's important for believers in Christ to know is that it is important to know And understand your spiritual gifts. You see, understanding your spiritual gifts and then taking action with those gifts in serving the body of Parker Methodist Church is the key to unlocking your purpose at this church. More than that, it is important for your own personal spiritual growth because God knew you in your mother's womb before you were even born, the scripture says. You see, once you begin to understand, it gives you knowledge. And when you have knowledge, knowledge removes doubt. And when doubt is removed, you have courage and you have faith in moving in the direction that God has given you for your life in serving our church body. You see, spiritual gifts helps the church grow. Because it helps us to understand the direction the Holy Spirit is leading us in. Now, if we don't embrace the spiritual gifts that God has given us, then we blindly lead the church into the future. So if you're not grounded in God's word, knowing how God leads you, the question I ask you is, how do you lead the church? Proverbs 29, 18 says this, Again, where there is no vision, the people what? Perish. You know, on Easter of 2013, the border of North Carolina and Virginia uh, was closed for hours between these two states because of a massive car accident. Police reported that 17 wrecks um, involved 95 cars and trucks. This massive car accident on the border of Virginia and North Carolina left three people uh, dead and more than two dozen injured. Now, what caused this massive accident? Well, people were driving in a thick fog. The police report went on to say that visibility was hardly even 100 feet. And by the time these speeding cars on the interstate uh, realized that it was too late, and it caused this massive pileup. Church, I have a question for you. How do you effectively lead people in the future if you cannot see? You see, spiritual leadership is seeing further than what other people see. Now, some people may have a different vision. Some people may be nearsighted. Some people may be farsighted. But the vision of God has always been about moving forward. Moses led the people following a a pillar uh, of cloud at night and a pillar of fire, uh, rather during the day, and a pillar of fire at night. For us at Parker Methodist Church, we've been through a lot. We've been through hurricanes, we've rebuilt this church, we've rebuilt the parsonage, and you know what? 
I wasn't around then, but I'm sure it wasn't easy for Pastor John. But let me tell you, he led. And for the church body, they followed. And here we are today. Parker Methodist is still standing. We don't know what God has in the future for us. But I promise you, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, Jesus will help us through that fog. You know, sometimes they say that when you're in battle, the fog and friction of war doesn't cause us to see straight, doesn't cause us to think straight. But as long as our eyes are on Jesus, he'll take care of us. And if his eyes are on the sparrow, how much more are we important than the birds? Hmm? You know, we have to follow something that's not new, okay? Not new. We have to follow something that's ancient. We as a church body have been given instructions to understand and know the gifts that God has given us as a congregation. And individually, when we work together, it's a betterment for the whole. Colossians 1.18 says, remind us that we are, we are, we are members of the, of the body of Christ. And it says that he is the head of the church. Now, if the truth be told, sometimes, think about it. If the truth be told, sometimes we try to be the head of the church. We think we know what's best. But that's not our job. The first thing we should do is always go to God in prayer. While every church has its own unique style of leadership and leadership within the body, the ultimate leader that we must not forget is Jesus Christ, who is the head of the body. Now this takes us to point number two. Where do your spiritual gifts come from? Hmm? Now, let's take a look. For the answer in our scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6 and verse 11. Now there are distinctive varieties of spiritual gifts, special abilities given by the grace and extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit operating in believers. But it is the same Spirit who grants them and empowers believers. Verse 5. There are distinctive varieties of ministries and services, but it is the same Lord who is served. And there are distinctive ways of working to accomplish things, but it is the same God who produces all things in all believers, inspiring, energizing, and empowering them. In verse 11, all these things, the gifts, the achievements, the abilities, the empowering, are brought about by one and the same. Holy Spirit, distributing to each one individually just as he chooses. The answer, of course, to the question is the Holy Spirit, who precedes spiritual gifts. Your spiritual gifts, they vary far and wide from one person to the other. And the author of life who prescribes these gifts intends for us to not only receive these gifts, but to have a cause and effect, not only for our personal growth, but for church growth as well. And when I say church growth, I'm talking spiritually first, numerically second. They go hand in glove, because we can't forget the Great Commission to go and make disciples. That means we don't believe in addition at Parker Methodist Church. We believe in multiplication. Hmm? Earlier this month, you may remember in the news, hundreds and hundreds of motorists were stranded in Virginia. It was stretched out about 50 miles because of a freak snowstorm. And they were there for hours and hours on end. Even one of our congressmen, I think, was trapped in this freak snowstorm. Do you remember this? And it sort of made me remember back in 2018. You know, I was stationed in Idaho at one time, but they get lots of snow as well. But back in 2018, because of a another snowstorm that hit in Idaho, a truck 
pulling a trailer, lost control, and went off the road. And when this truck went off the road, it ejected a dog out of the cab. And it caused a pileup as well for hours and hours on end until they could clear it. The last thing people remember was that dog that got ejected. It got up and it took off running out in the fields, filled with snow. That was the last time they saw that border collie, so they thought. The border collie was found a few weeks later on a farm unbeknownst to the owner. It was helping to herd the sheep. You see, if you don't know anything about border collies, I've owned one before, their distinctive personality is to herd sheep. I can tell you, because when I owned a border collie, all they, all my uh, uh, dog did was just herd me in the house, run in circles. It's something that's built down inside them that I got to herd. It, sometimes I, I wondered after they found that dog, what that dog said to itself when it found these sheep, I found my purpose. I found my purpose in serving to herd these sheep. Let me ask you a question. What were you born to do? What spiritual gift has God given you to serve at Parker Methodist Church? You know, Sometimes when I'm in the back shaking hands and people are leaving, some people say to me that they want to do more, but because of physical impairments, um, all they want to do is just lift up the church in prayer. Then pray. Whatever it is you can do, praying, giving, talking, calling people, sending emails, whatever you do, don't do it for yourself. Do it for the church. Do it for the glory of God. Now, this takes us to our last point. What is the extent of our gifts? Hmm? In other words, what are the limitations of your gifts? And by limitations, I mean, what are the boundaries? Let me explain what I mean. I once served a church where a man owned a gas station, and he ran a very successful business. Everybody in town knew this man. But he discovered that his spiritual gift was teaching inside the church. And he loved to teach. Now, he was talented in running his gas station. But let me tell you, he was off the charts blessed in teaching. What a great teacher. I'll never forget him. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, The Spirit has given each of us a special way of serving others. When I was serving in Los Angeles, I had a chance to meet the Red Tails. Now, the Red Tails were pilots that came from World War II. The Red Tails were African-American pilots who were sent to Europe in 1944 after graduating from pilot school just north of here in Tuskegee, Alabama. The Red Tails were sent to destroy German trains and supply lines and convoys, but air-to-air -air combat was happening about 100 miles north of where they were. Now, if you can see this picture at home or where you're at, I don't know if these gentlemen are still alive or not, uh, but these were two of the Red Tails from World War II. And one of their missions... Uh, they were able to engage in air-to-air -air combat with the enemy. And on their way home, one of the pilots' names, he had a call sign. His name was Deacon. That's appropriate, isn't it? His name was Deacon. And as Deacon was leading the Red Tails home, he said a prayer over the intercom. And when he prayed, he said, thank you, Jesus, for bringing us back to our squadron safely. Now, one of the other red tails was an agnostic, and he said over the intercom, Jesus had nothing to do with it. We just got lucky. 
Another red tail spoke up and say and said that prayer makes a difference. Isn't that something? Coming home to their home base there in Italy, they're arguing theology over the intercom. Isn't that something? Just goes to show, hey, people sometimes don't get along up in the air. Sometimes people don't get along down on the ground either. Prayer should be a part of every believer's life. You can't say, all oh, because I don't have the spiritual gift of intercessory prayer that I can't pray. No, prayer is important for every believer. It's just that some that have the gift of prayer can pray it up more for others. They're more focused on praying, and they can pray for hours on end on other people. Heck, I've had people call me month after month asking how my knee is doing after my reconstructive knee surgery. Listen, those people get to know them because they are right there at the throne of God. And this ideal of asking God to bless our service members, to bless our country, to bless our church, that's nothing new. That's been going on for the longest and longest of time and centuries. And asking God, again, to bless our church, bless our leaders, bless new people that come in, that's something that we should be doing anyways because it goes along with agreement to Matthew 28, as I said earlier, and that is to go and make disciples. I said earlier, we shouldn't be adding people. We should be multiplying, bringing them in by leaps and bounds. In other words, if the church, if the church is not involved in the equation of life, then the church has no influence on the outside world and we're just being greedy on the inside. We need to think outward focused on how we can help people. I'm not saying that's what we do at Parker, but I'm saying the church in general around the world should be outward focused. And that's what Jesus said. And after all, Jesus didn't have a church. Jesus is the church. He was the walking church. And when Christ lives in us, we are portable sanctuaries wherever we go. Again, it's important to think about the influence of our church and how we can serve others. Let me give you an example, okay? And all these examples are great examples of great things that, humanly speaking, that our world has done. But let me ask you, every time I read something, how can the church also be effective? Now, I'm not saying the church should keep up with the Joneses. If anything, the world should keep up with the church because in the end, everything leads back to Jesus. Think about it. In 1943, penicillin was invented. And while we believe in modern medicine, we also believe in the power of God in prayer. In 1945, the invention and explosion of the atomic bomb took place. But we also know that God shall judge between the nations and shall beat our swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. In 1948, the United Nations had a universal declaration of human rights. But Jesus said that we should all be good Samaritans. In 1951, remember super glue? It was invented. But we all know that Christ is the glue that holds the church together, making all of its parts work together perfectly. In 1953, the black box recorder for airplanes were invented to record what happens to airplanes. But Psalms 56, 8 says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in a bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. In 1965, remember the Ices and the Slurpees? Mm, they're so sweet. Kids and adults still love them. But the teachings of God are sweeter than honey. In 1969, the first artificial human heart transplant took place. But the prophet Ezekiel said, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. 
In 1973, Motorola made the first call using a cell phone. But Jeremiah 33, 3 reminds us to call upon God and he will answer. And that's through prayer, not a cell phone and not through texting. In 1984, the Apple Macintosh became the first successful home computer. But computers in home offices are being replaced Rather, they are replacing our Bibles and, and coffee tables. The, the, the computer is now our focus of attention. Nothing wrong with technology. And the church should understand the digital age. But we should be influencing the world. In, 19, in the 1990s, the World Wide Web goes global. But Jesus said again to go forth into all the world making disciples. And you know, I could go on and on and on. But I think you get my point. If the church is going to be relevant in the 21st century, then we need to embrace our spiritual gifts no matter what our age. And 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 and, and watch Parker United Methodist Church grow, not for our glory, not for what we've done, but for what Christ does through us and because we are on his marching orders. I promise you, the best is yet to come. In closing, let me recap what we just talked about. Number one, do you know what your spiritual gifts are? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your pathway straight. In other words, we need to pursue God's wisdom for our church and for our lives. James 3.17 says, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy, good fruits, impartial, impartial, um, impartial and sincere. And then number two, where do your spiritual gifts come from? We said it already. Spiritual gifts come from the Holy Spirit. And remember, when we work together as a church body, it advances the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And number three, what is the extent of our gifts? We said when individual Christians understand their spiritual gifts, it becomes extraordinary inside us for the fulfillment of making the church and Christ known to the world. Spiritual gifts and church growth. Let us pray. Lord, help us discern what our spiritual gifts are, not to wish that we had certain gifts because we are blessed with what you have given us and we are to be obedient to what we are given and not to force a gift that's not there. And once we figure that out, help us to ask the question, How can we find ways to use these gifts to benefit the church? Lord, we know you designed spiritual gifts for the service of the church, for spiritual and numerical growth, for extending the great mission statement of making disciples so simple but yet so strategic, for building bridges into our community. We ask with humility, dear God, that you help us to find new ways to transform our church, our community, and our world. In Jesus' name, amen. How is it that God is calling you? Listen to this song as we stand, 593 verses 1 through 3, Here I Am, Lord. And if you would like to join this church by transfer of membership or uh, a first-time confession of Christ, we invite you to come as well. Please stand, 593. All three verses, here I am, Lord.
the name of the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.